my name is Shane Chung. I'm a licensed California guide for fly fishing the surf as well as the bay. Uh, I've been fishing Southern California from the surf to the mountains for over 30 years. This one is articulated salty rabbit. It started out as a articulate, or actually as a leech pattern for the bays, but um, when fish school, the people who make fish school came out with these articulated shanks, it made it a lot easier to do uh, articulated patterns without having to cut a hook or uh, creating your own wire, which is what I was just doing before, uh, especially when the wire became sparse. I stopped making them articulated versions. So in this one, this fly is uh, good for fishing uh, the surf, the unweighted version, uh, the weighted version for uh, jetties and pilings as well as uh, the eelgrass in the bays. So what we're going to do, so this is uh, straight cut, so it lays uh, straight back for the tail, it's about uh, half an inch. We're going to pierce it from the back, through the hide, into the hair. Alright, and we're going to tie this down. So this goes into the vise. Okay, I need to change that thread. Using about three out thread there. Yeah, it's three out thread. Um, three out or uh, size B. Um, size B is a little heavier. I actually like using that to tie down the eyes of my uh, clausers because I could cinch down on a lot harder than three out. Okay, if you want to use a longer tail, do a mono loop. But because this tail is so short, it's not going to foul. You can do a mono loop and do a tail twice as long. But because this is the articulated part, I don't need the, mono, the longer tail anymore. So to emulate again, some kind of row sack. I'm going to use a cross cut. You can see how it's laying down sideways against the hide, where a straight cut would go with the hide. And that's what we're going to use for the body is cross cut rabbit. Uh, if you want a fuller, bigger version of this, especially black for fishing at night, um, I would recommend using either a stripped uh, raccoon or a fox hair. Fox hair is really bushy, pushes a lot of water, um, articulates like marabou but it's also uh, very thick and dense, it'll hold water and be kind of hard to cast. So definitely not something you throw on a small rod, but it's a great pattern to fish at night when you're fishing for rock species. So, okay, now we have the row sack down. Smooth, smooth it out a little. So when we put the white on it, it'll transition easier. Okay, when you're laying down the cross cut, you always want to make sure the fiber lays back. Mm -hmm. If you tie it the other way, it gets uh, the the rabbit hair gets pretty unruly, and you'll start overwrapping the fibers. If it happens to be a really dry day, a lot of static electricity, go ahead and wet your fingers and slide it along the rabbit as you're going and that'll control it as well. I just wrap this forward. Come from under. Pull the fibers back, cross, a couple wraps in front, and come across a few times. Pull it down, and you can cut it. What you're going to do is cut across that same line, and use that as a guide to cut my rabbit. That way, I won't cut over the thread. 
Now I just tie this down and make a nice neat head. Okay, so now we got the articulated part of the fly done. Now the nice thing about this style of fly is you can match any color pattern you want. You go crazy, use your psychedelic colors, make it look like a tie-dye fly, or you could use all black. What hook is that? It was a Daiichi 2546 size 6 hook. The original pattern was the uh, same hook, but on a size 2. And uh, we had dumbbell eyes by the uh, points, or the point we tied that in instead. Now we're going to just thread the eye. Uh, and this is pretty much how that's going to work as it's bouncing around. So get that loop back into the uh, ooh, rabbit hair. Some surf flies. Tie down that open gap. More cross cut rabbit. And you're essentially just going to wind it up. You could actually variegate it if you want, use two rabbits at the same time, or you could wrap part of it, cover up the shank. Put some beads in there to make a rattle um, and tie it off like an intruder style steel head, which is just basically a little fluff on the end, fluff on top, bare body or just a covered body with some beads on it. So again, we're just going to wrap this forward. Blood. Okay, again, you're going to tie this off at an angle. And make sure that's tight when you put it in there, though, not like what I did. Okay, now time for the fish skull, the sculpin helmet. It's made by the people who make fish skull, as well as the same people who make the articulated shank. And we're going to use a clear goo, which is a dental resin, set off by blue light. There's tough a lot, you can use epoxy as well. Of course, epoxy, you do have a time limit, so you want to do, do it in small batches. Is fish goo available at um, uh, right now, fly fishing stores? Or? Yeah, a lot of fly fishing stores have it. Uh, it can be ordered as well. Make sure you uh, which direction the hook is pointed upward, so that way you could put the eyes on in the right direction.
Little dab of Kurgu again. Some guys are a bit anal about how they have their eyes, the pupils all match in the same direction. I don't care, so mine look all cross-eyed. Yeah. This is blue light. So the caveat is blue light's bad for your eyes. So I cover it up a little bit, but I like covering up because it concentrates the light on the head. Um, but 10, 15 seconds will start the curing effect. Uh, this is the same stuff that your dentist uses to fill the fill fillings with. Uh, so it's going in your mouth, so it's not toxic. You could probably lick it if you wanted to. It probably won't make you feel too good, but if you do get it in your mouth, you're not going to die. Um, Tuffle Eye is the other one they use, that uses UV light. This uses blue light. Epoxy uses regular light. What I'm going to do is uh, put a little thread in the front just to give a little finished look to it. And the nice thing about this thread is if you fly, if you knock it against the rocks or for one reason or another it starts to spin, this thread head up front will keep it from falling off. And you can color it with the thread with the markers to match whatever uh, coloration you want. <coughs> So in reality, you don't even need to use white thread for a white fly. So Shane, why are you using the sculpin head as opposed to the regular fish skull heads? Because uh, it's flatter, it lays a little bit more lower profile, and it actually gives the profile look of a uh, sculpin. But I like this because when it hits, a thump. And so it kind of gives a little, little thumping noise. And then what it does on the sand, it'll send that out, a little, little vibration. Whatever is around with fins on it will come over and take a look. It's got a little buggy look to it. And the way the tail will move back here. So you could actually tie this on a jig hook if you want to articulate that even more. So like a 60 degree jig head, uh, jig hook uh, made by any of the manufacturers. All right, so that's articulated uh, salty wabbit.